So welcome all attendees to the Style 411 Inside the World of Styling session. My name is Colleen Cradifil. I'm the style editor at People Magazine, and I'm excited to moderate this session. Um, at any time throughout the panel, um, feel free to leave your questions, comments, any technical support requests in the chat box. Remember, it's public so we can all see. Um, our panel discussion will be 30 minutes, and we'll leave 10 at the end for Q&A. And it's also being recorded and will be available post-event. Um, remember to follow us at GlamHive and engage with us socially using our event hashtag GlamHiveLive. And most importantly, I want to say a quick thank you to our presenting sponsor, Mary Kay Global Design Studio. Mary Kay champions creative industries that are diverse, inclusive, and innovative at their core. And together with the design studio, celebrate a world where beauty, fashion, and empowerment are synonymous. And now I am so excited to introduce our amazing lineup of panelists. First, we have celebrity and editorial stylist, Joey Thorpe. Joey got, her start. Go. Hi. Joey got her start in magazines, working at People's Style Watch, In Style, was the fashion editor at Essence before starting her freelance career. She's worked with so many stars like Andre Day, Gabrielle Union, um, and can be seen on TV uh, segments like on Good Morning America and Wendy Williams. Next, we have Carson Love, who is a Nashville-based wardrobe and personal stylist. She helps everyday women and men build a wardrobe that gives them confidence, specializing in closet consultation, event styling, personal shopping services, and more. And last but not least, we have Mer Elizabeth Meredith, who is a stylist and costume designer for TV and film, who's worked on projects for NBC, Bravo, HBO, her most recent work includes Netflix's TV show, Say I Do Love Story, and Amazon's new adventure show, The Path. Um, thank you all for being here. I'm so excited to talk to you all. Thank you. Hi, thank you. So I kind of want to kick off and learn a little bit more about each of your specific worlds of styling. Um, I'm going to kick it to Joy Lee, um, first. And can you tell me how you would compare styling for a magazine full-time versus freelance styling? What are some of the ups and downs of both? Wow, um, it's it's very different and different. It's the same and different in so many ways because I was an editor at a magazine for most of my career and I've been on staff and had, you know, that type of job that day to day for a number of years and the great thing about that is that you work for a great publication that you love um you meet so many people like i got to work with celebs and models and different photographers and have relationships with different show um people at different showrooms pr people and and different um you know, different different brands. And so you form all these relationships and you're doing that constantly. And you're also, it's fun because you get to go to events and you get perks and it, it's really an exciting thing. Um, and then, you know, when you go, like for me, I just started freelancing in 2018. And for me, I had to adjust to that because you have to do a little more networking to get, you know, jobs you have to constantly be when you're out you have to now socialize to think about your next job and you know you're talking to people but you're like but I need a job can you hire me what can you hire me for and even though I've been in the industry for a very long time and worked with different designers and I have the taste level that a lot of stylists that style celebrities have because they're styling a major celeb they will get probably more sought after than someone who's with, like me, who's been in the industry for about 15 years and have the same amount of experience. So it's building that new kind of um, network to book more jobs that's different. And that's kind of the downside of freelancing. But the great thing is you get more time to yourself. You can, you can have more personal time and you're not work, like at a magazine, I was working around the clock constantly. I was constantly like not taking lunch or working to 11 or 12, you know how it can be. And you know, you just have to get things done. You're like a machine, you're, every day is just, you know, chucking along, you know? 
Yeah. Yeah. The deadlines are just a little different in that sense. They're nonstop mm -hmm. and taking on projects that have their own entity. I'm sure it's just like a different vibe. Yeah. And that's fun too with freelance is I can work on a commercial and then I could work on a cover shoot and then I could work for um, a more corporate kind of styling job. So I get to do different things and that's, that's a, a part to freelancing as well. Cool. And Carson, can you give a rundown of your typical work day as a personal stylist? No, because <laughs> every day is different. But I can probably go through like where I spend a lot of my time. Um, I think, you know, to her last point, that is the grass is always greener. I used to always think, oh gosh, I could never have a corporate job or a desk job because I would just get so bored if I did the same thing every day. But now that it's like totally the other side of the spectrum where every day is totally different. Every week is structured totally different. I do see the appeal for sure. So I think grass <laughs> is always greener, um, but I think different, you know, I don't know if it's personality types or whatever can kind of adjust, uh, adjust to the irregular schedules. But um, yeah, every day, every week, every month is totally different. But whenever I'm uh, working one-on-one -on -one with personal clients, um, you know, typically, ideally, we do start by taking an inventory of what they already have. So, you know, a lot of people call it like a closet edit or whatever, um, but just really taking good stock in everything that they already own, all the usable pieces they already have. It can also be just like a real kind of like um, discovery session of like <laughs> um, sizing. Oh, I heard a beep. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's a good one. It was like a happy little toot. <laughs> um, but anywho, so yeah, big portion of time spent literally in the closet. Um, and, uh, you know, just going through what they already have, packing for clients. Like it's a lot of in-home stuff um, is a big chunk of where I spend my time. Then of course, there's another big chunk that is spent kind of like out in the trenches, I say, out at stores, um, you know, with brands, uh, pulling, there's like the very glamorous piece of like all the time we spend at UPS and FedEx and the post office with returns and shipping and what have you. Um, and then I do, I'm kind of a, a weirdo in that I would say, uh, you know, 80% of my time is spent with personal styling, one-on-one -on -one with clients, my personal clients. And then probably like 20% of uh, my time, I do do wardrobe styling for like photo shoots and music videos and that sort of thing. Definitely a smaller percentage, but um, two ends of it. So, you know, on a typical week, there could be two days that I'm shooting, whether it be for like a music video or e-com or whatever. Probably four four days I'd be in face to face with clients, and then I'd like most weeks I like to carve out at least one or two days that I can be in front of the computer, you know, doing all the like super glam behind the scenes businessy stuff and catching up with um, online shopping orders and and email and that sort of thing. So um, just a long winded way to say everywhere and I do travel I have some clients um uh in Florida and DC and Colorado and so I do travel a little bit so throughout the month I could be um you know going to some different cities and some different places so um just scatter scatterbrained <laughs> hot mess express <laughs> no it's uh, there's a lot going on but it all sounds exciting and oh. Um, Elizabeth, can you um, explain how costume design is different than traditional styling? Absolutely. And it, and it really is different um, because I started off styling and then I got into costume design. And I my first movie was Muhammad Ali with Will Smith. And I was just a wardrobe PA, but uh, Will Smith's customer really took me underneath his wings and showed me how this whole industry works. And I needed to join the union. And once I did that, I joined the union and I just became this big shopper on all these big TV shows. However, then I would go back to styling and work with stylists. And about 15 years ago, I decided to join the Costume Designers Guild 
And I thought I was just going to work on TV and film. However, with my previous experience in styling, I started getting calls for magazines, photo shoots, commercials. And I really realized that there's a niche of that you can do costume design and you can also do wardrobe styling. If you're a really good stylist and you're a really good designer, you can do both. But the difference is if you're gonna be a designer, you've gotta really know how to get a script, break it down, do wardrobe changes, and you have to know your continuity. And that's the basis of being a costume designer. With a wardrobe stylist, I get who I'm dressing, really know who I'm dressing, whether it's celebrity, could be just, you know, you're out your model, could be plus size modeling, really know your clients, knowing how to pull from PR companies, knowing how to really navigate styling in a different sense, whether it's editorial, it could be lifestyle campaign for Nordstrom's. So it's a, it's, it's a, the same world as far as pulling clothing and dressing, but it's different in structure. So I always tell people, if you don't know, literally go out there, work on a movie as a wardrobe PA, work as a styling assistant, because they're both amazing. And I'm so lucky that about six months out of the year, I do TV shows and I'll do six months for that. Right now, I'm currently on a soundstage doing a big campaign ad. So we're shooting all week in a campaign ad. And then next week I'm doing a big commercial. So if you want to keep really busy and, and be freelance, that's how you keep busy. And it's really done so well for me in my career because Amazon just put us up for an Emmy nomination for the pack, which is really exciting. And I get to do TV and film, but now I'm on a big campaign ad. So it's, I always tell people, try everything. Really try it all because that's where you're going to find. And it, it might not be TV and film, and it might not be doing continuity and breakdown and being wardrobe trailers. And, you know, it might be more on a soundstage or at a studio or filming it, you know, campaign ad. Um, they're two different worlds. And, but I say try it all because you just don't know which one is going to be the right thing for you. That's great advice. And Joye, do you have some advice on what makes a good editorial stylist? Um, for me, what makes a good editorial stylist is to kind of always stay humble and do the best you can to create great relationships and keep them um, because you never know um, what you're going to do or who's going to help you. And going freelance, I can honestly say that all the people that I've worked with throughout the years have constantly given me jobs or booked me for something or recommended me for things. And it's really been an awesome thing, you know, because I was in magazines like on staff at a, a you know, at a job for over 10 years. And so like that kind of like relationship that you keep with people is valuable. So I feel like that's a really great tip and to always just take jobs that make you happy and you feel like that can elevate your career. You don't wanna take things that just make you miserable because it's just not worth it. Yeah, that is, that is really good advice. Why do it? Like not worth it. Yeah, um, yeah. Carson, what do you love most about personal styling? Um, let's see. I don't know if there's a way to say this without sounding so, so corny, but it really is uh, the longevity of working with clients over time for me. Um, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I get totally fueled and feel totally rewarded whenever I'm working on like one-off projects or, you know, a more creative project with like a photographer or something like that, like totally gratifying and fueling. But just for me personally, I uh, just get so inspired and feel so fulfilled um, being kind of a constant in my clients' lives. Like, I can get goosebumps thinking about it because I just look back and, you know, some of these women and men that I've worked with over the years, you know, my gosh, you know, maybe we've tackled some of 
you know how life is just life's ups and downs and things that um, you don't expect some things that we plan for months for just all across the board, but just like knowing that I was just a tiny little piece and helping them feel supported through life's like peaks and valleys, um, is just forever gratifying to me. Like it never, it, I have, I haven't lost any sparkle with it. Like, I just, I feel so in love with it every time I just, you know, you get a message or you just have that feeling of like, okay, I, I played a tiny role in like the success of this or, or, you know, um, the happiness of this project or whatever it is. So for me, it's that, uh, longevity, that, that relationship, that ongoing relationship with clients. And that's probably why I've veered away. This could probably be a whole other topic discussion, like how you structure your business, but I've veered away from like trying to push things like packages or, or whatever, because I never, uh, or I, I rarely want it to feel like a one and done kind of thing. I want it to feel like I compare it a lot to like being a personal trainer, you know, how a personal trainer helps you out in the gym, like every morning or whatever. Mm-hmm. I always want to feel like, um, that like constant support, you know, no matter what transitions or phases of life we're in. Um, so yeah, it's the people and it's the relationships that I love most about it. I have to say all the other stuff is just beautiful, beautiful icing on a cake. <laughs> Yeah. Being a personal trainer is a great way to think about it. Like as a comparison, it really is. People sometimes go back and forth to the gym and need extra help and all that stuff. That's a great way to. I'm from like a small town. And I think, uh, to be honest, most of my family and parents still don't know what the heck I do. So I feel like I, I find a lot of like metaphors and comparisons like that to try to help explain it to people. I love that. And Elizabeth, I imagine being on set for like TV and film has to be different than the editorial set where you're like there for a campaign. Um, What are some of like the differences there and what's like the less glamorous side of, you know, um, styling for TV and film that we might not realize? Oh, that's an, (laughs) that's a great question. I could talk about that for hours. (laughs) <laughs> um, well, for instance, when you're on a TV show, you are given a script, you're given very little time to prep, and you hit the ground running. So you normally have about five to six to seven, sometimes 10 people in a wardrobe department. And I lead the pack along with my supervisor. I've got shoppers, I've got set people, everybody knows their role. We are out shopping, we are we have lift gates of trucks just coming at eleven o'clock at night. We're rolling in racks, you know, just lifting um, shopping bags, shining shoes up, getting ready. And and you start cute in the morning, but I'm telling you this, by the end of the day, if we want to take a group Photoshop, I'm always like, let's pass. It's it's a dirty job, but if you love this job, and I love doing characters, and I love being on set, and there's an energy about being on the film set that you just get. And, And you can show up on set, and you could be in the middle of the desert in a big trailer with all your wardrobe. It's not glamorous. I always tell people that. If you want to shop with Gucci and do all that, that's not TV and film. Um, but however, if you like your job and, and you love this and you love creating these characters, because once you see it on the big screen, you're like, that's me. I created that look. It's so awesome to see. Now the dirt, the carrying the boxes, the shoe shining, all that, the sweating, you just, it's part of the job. Versus an editorial, which is I'm on right now, I get to look a little bit cuter. I'm at Coyote Sound Stages. Our, you know, our wrap time is maybe about 6.30 and we have a nice setup and it's, it's a little bit more glamorous, but you still have to do the work. You still have to get down and dirty and, and make sure everything's set up. But again, that's why I say everybody out there, try it out because it's, it's, they're both great worlds. I happen to like them both, you know, and, and I've done, I've done it all but it's great to really try them out. And don't let me say getting down and dirty could scare you off in the film world because again, once you see it on the big screen and your name's running in those credits, you're like, God, I was a part of that. And I was a part of getting dirty and I was a part of 
all those shoes shining and those late nights and all that. And, and one thing I really want to say lastly is um, this is not for the faint hearted, but the hours we do, and I could say for all these women here, I know we've all put in the 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 hour days. So, um, but again, it's loving your job. It's, it's at the 16th hour, if I'm still doing that fitting, if I nail a fitting, it's a gratification. I love getting for it. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And because it all comes there, you know, there's the grittier moments and the glam moments, but it does make it all worth it in the end. Yeah. And I love that. And Joey, what do you think, um, what's the most difficult thing about working with celebrity clients when you, when you are with them and what's like the best thing, kind of like difficult and best? What's the, what's the, you know, range there? So with celebrities, it's, it's more about them, their personality, what fits them right. And what, you know, cause when you think about people, we're all different. And so what looks good on somebody doesn't look good on someone else or vice versa. Um, and so when I dress celebrities, I have to think of them, look at them, how they would dress, not all of my perspective, like what I would do with a model. If I, you know, when I dress a model, I, it's all visually what I want to do, how artsy I want to be, how creative I want to be. If I want to put a bow and a, you know, a diamond here and have her hold it, like it can happen. With celebrities, they're very fickle and they're like, I don't like that. And it can be the best look of the season. And you're like, oh, you know, so you have to cater to them a little more, um, still make them look fantastic. But, you know, they come in all different shapes, sizes, faces, color, everything. And so you, you more so, see, I'm sorry about this. <laughs> New York living, we get it, we get it. We feel Not like we're um, But you, you know, you, you have to dress them and cater to them. And what's really great about that is when you dress women and you know that they think that they look cute, you know, cause you can see it in their body language and the way they look in the mirror. It's just so fabulous when you put something on someone and they are like, you know, you can tell that they're like, I look so cute. It like gives me butterflies. <laughs> I like it. I love it. I love that part of it. Oh, that is awesome. And um, like, what has been your favorite job over the years? One that like, will go down as like, that was the best gig I've ever had. Me? Mm -hmm. hmm, wow. I, I don't know if I've had a favorite job because like at all, the, at, at everything I do, there's been an epic moment that I've had and like some places not so epic. Um, and like Elizabeth said, it's, it's down and dirty. Fashion is not fun. Like behind the scenes and you having to get work done. It's, it's a job. It's not all glamorous, but there are times when you are excited about something. And I guess, um, I was really excited when I was a kid because my first job was at, um, Teen People Magazine. Um, and I met like, Gwen Stefani when she was in No Doubt. And I was so excited because for me, she was kind of a fashion icon for me already, even though like she she started dressing in the thrift stores and she I could just tell she had like personal style. And for me, she was cool. Um, and before um, her stylist, Andrea Lieberman, really put a signature on her, I was really excited to meet her. So like that was a epic moment for me starting out and like throughout my career I've just had moments like that where it's not all celebrity but it's like when I meet a certain designer when I met Patricia Fields at a party I was literally like dying I was like I have to tell her I have to tell her that I'm so excited about this moment and all the work she's done and how many years she had to be in this industry doing the work and that is major for me because it's a lot of work. What we all do is just a lot of work. Yeah. So, the, so it's just moments. I have so many moments, so many places and jobs, you know. 
Yeah. And they all come together to like, I'm sure like keep inspiring you for each thing that you work on. Yeah. Man. And um, Elizabeth, what is the most valuable lesson you've learned throughout your career? Whether that's like one thing that sticks out specifically, or just like the biggest lesson you've learned throughout like different jobs. Um, well, I have to say, when, especially when it comes to celebrities, is just to be very respectful. If I can give the best advice to and everybody on here, is that for me, learning to always show up, to treat people respectfully, to make sure whatever they ask of you, because it's going to be asked a lot. You may be asked to run to five different malls in one day. Your attitude in this industry is everything. Just to show up with a great attitude, to be friendly, most importantly, super professional, um, and really to be a team player because you're going to get thrown five different things. I could come in with all my looks set this morning. They just changed four looks on me. So I have to leave at three o'clock and go back out. But it's like, I'm here to do the job. No problem. I've got this. Don't worry. Every look is going to be amazing. So your attitude, being very conscious of your receipts, we're given money to shop for, being respectful, and, and really just always treating your team and the people around you right. Because my team, I, the costume designer and stylist is nothing without her team. You know, they help make everything come together. So um, that is probably my greatest advice. And, and being the team player for the producers, the executive producers, your photographers, and your attitude will get you so far in this world. It's, it's everything. So, and that's why I keep getting hired back for jobs and back for jobs because when I tell my team before we start it, I give a pep talk. I'm like, listen, you guys, we've got this. We're going to do an amazing job. Um, no matter what, as long as we're shooting and no one even notices about wardrobe, we just show up and everything looks great and not one complaint from my department. That is a shoe in. That's a hundred percent victory win right out the door. So your attitude, it's just been my biggest learning thing in all of my career. Nice. And Carson, what would you tell someone who wants to get into personal styling? Like what's the main thing they should, you know, keep in mind starting out? Ooh, that's a really great question. Um, I would say, you know, probably echoing what these um, women have said a lot getting your hand in all different aspects of the industry, I think is great. Um, you know, I start, whenever I first started getting into styling, I was an intern and then I was an assistant and I had to work another job just because those jobs obviously weren't paying. I didn't expect to be paid. I never asked to be paid. And then I would take, I would network with photographers and creative directors and agencies and do any little like you know, not glam jobs I could. I would assist just, I mean, can I just come steam? Do you need, you know, someone to help load or unload? Just trying to get my hand in as many different rooms and sets and um, and always like staying humble. I'm oh, sorry, I just got a notification. <laughs> um, uh, you know, that's something that e even though I don't take jobs that don't pay anymore, I still feel like I keep that attitude like I'll never be too proud I'll never be too big-headed um, not to do some of those things um, so I think if you're wanting to get into personal styling um, I think attitude I mean exactly what Elizabeth said that whole time I was just in my in inside I was going amen 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 um, it's all about attitude and I think like with any industry that you're wanting to break into uh, recognizing your own strengths and really embracing those because uh, I think imposter syndrome and comparison can, I mean, I, I guess I can only speak for myself, but I know it, it happens all the time for me. I can only imagine it happens in all industries as well, but just reminding myself like, what can I control? What are my strengths? What do I know without a doubt 100% I can bring to the table every single day and like staying to, true to that. 
Um, I was actually just kind of thinking about this this morning because we were, you know, going to get on this panel and I was like, oh, like everyone is so amazing. Like, what am I, what do I bring? Like, you know, you have like those moments all the time. And um, like, I know uh, I may not always be like the, the most creative stylist in the room. Maybe I won't always have like the best, whatever, the best portfolio in the room or the best connections in the room. But like, I know my strengths. I know that I can control my attitude. I know that everyone will always have a good experience working with me. Um, and I, I can always let that shine. I can always lead with that. And for some people, it may not mean anything, but to some people, it's going to mean a lot. Um, so I think just recognizing your strengths um, and playing towards those always staying humble and always being super sensitive. I think in personal styling, I mean, I'm sure, I think it's like this in all, all the different aspects of styling, but with personal styling, um, you're kind of meeting people at a very vulnerable place. Like within an hour of meeting a new client, you may be seeing them naked. You may be going through, you know, some literal baggage that they're holding onto in their closet. Um, so I think, you know, of course, you have to have the creativity, you have to have the skills, but I think being a people person and being very sensitive um, to where you're meeting people um, is super important and kind of half the battle. So that was kind of a ramble and long winded, but <laughs> no, it was an inspirational answer. I love that. And I'm going to turn um, a little bit over to like the viewers. They, I, we've gotten a few questions, so I want to make sure we get to that. Um, one question is, how do you balance work and being creative, taking care of yourself since the job can be mentally demanding? So maybe we'll just go through, you know, each one, of course, and you want to like start us off and everyone can kind of, you know, answer how they balance personal and professional life. Mm, that's an amazing question. And I would be a total phony if I sat here and tried to pretend like I have that figured out, <laughs> um, especially to the personal side of it, because, you know, even whenever I come home at the end of the day, I tell my clients, you know, they all have, I don't have two phones. I have one phone, uh, you know, I, they know that they can text me, they can call me, they can send me pictures any time of day. Um, and it is hard sometimes not to bring home anything that you're worried about uh, during the day. Like it can be hard to unwind a little bit. Um, I think one, just accepting that that's just kind of part of the gig. Um, you know, there is no like, or at least for me, there is no like office store that I shut at the end of the day. It's all just kind of, and I think that's part of owning your own business too. Um, and being like a freelancer, it's all just kind of you, it's all kind of in your head. Um, you know, I think just like healthy habits that I think people would, uh, need to use in any industry, any stressful industry, any industry that kind of or job that kind of follows you home, I think apply here. Like um, I actually just in the last couple of years have really started to try to protect like my morning a little bit. Of course, not every day it works. If there's a call time, you know, if there's a shoot and there's a call time at 6 a.m., there's a call time at 6 a.m. Um, but whenever I'm in control of my own scheduling, I try to really protect my morning, you know, get my workout in, you know, do the little bit that I need to do just to feel like I've had a part of the day and then go about my day. Um, I've learned over the past couple of years that sleep is super important. <laughs> so just, I think healthy habits in general, like just to be like a healthy and happy person trying to find time and carve time, uh, out in the like every single day as best you can and also taking some pressure off like having some grace with yourself not every week is going to be perfect not every day is going to be perfect but I think what we do most of the time is more important than what just happens sometimes so if most days you um, can have some healthy habits can get a reasonable amount of sleep uh, and can have some grace with yourself I think you're doing pretty dang good nice I love that answer. Joye, do you want to share how you balance it all? It's really hard for me because um, I I tend to like, sometimes I get jobs and I'm working until 12 and I'm like, I have a call time at seven or something like that. And like, I love that you protect your mornings. Like I don't, I have to actually find that balance because I 
I just get booked and I get booked and I take the job and I'm like, I need to take this job. And I keep taking these jobs and I get very little time for myself sometimes. But what I try to do is maybe a little yoga because I love that to myself because that keeps me grounded. And I kind of take walks in Prospect Park in Brooklyn. And I kind of like try to do things like that to carve out time for myself but I will get better at it as time goes by because freelancing will be more normal for me and so I feel like I will figure it out a little bit more <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. love it and Elizabeth um I feel like I've really got it down I don't know I used to be really horrible where I used to just go to the gun you know job, 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 job. And I realized that it's so vital to have balance in your life and that we can just go, I've done three jobs back to back, but I planned a trip right after this. Or like when I get home from a long day, I light some candles, get some crystals out. I too am into yoga. Um, I'm also a Buddhist. So I take time out to chant for that. And I just, I really make sure I have my spiritual, emotional balance side. And no matter what, that, that is vital. Because if I'm healthy and I'm balanced, my jobs always, it always excel. They're always better. I show up as a better boss. So I always make sure, plan a trip. If I've got it just one Sunday off, whether it's a massage, a walk on the beach, it could be, you know, again, great yoga class, but to have the balance really brings you as a better costume designer and stylist because I'm happier, I'm more relaxed, and I've really gotten better for it throughout the years. And that was a learned thing. When I was younger, I was just like, go, 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 go. And now I'm like, this is just, you want to be healthy. And, and I'm telling everybody out there, if you create the balance in your life, you'll show up to be a better boss. I love that. And another viewer question, we have a few minutes left, so I wanna to try to get in. Um, what are your like favorite magazines for inspiration or really any place you go to for inspiration? Do you wanna kick us off, Elizabeth? Um, where, and where do I go for inspiration, you said? Yeah, either best magazines that you really like, your favorites, or where you just go in general for inspiration? You know what? I think being a costume designer and a stylist, one of my best inspirations is through traveling. Because when you travel, um, I did a show before the pandemic where I went to nine different countries. And I shot in Vienna and Italy and London and in Paris. And to know the difference of what everybody wore in these countries, as opposed to on a Netflix show, I traveled all around the South and I was in Tennessee and, and I was in Ohio and Indianapolis and I shot New York and to really pay attention to what people are wearing because when you get something, when you get a job, I can't tell you how many times that comes into play when I'm doing a styling job or when I'm costume designing a show and they're like, well, you're going to dress a, you know, Southern um a southern lawyer and then you have we're going to be shooting in new york well a new york lawyer is going to dress very different than the southern lawyer so paying attention to everyday people is really inspiring as well as to watching some of my favorite costume designers that do bridgerton and patricia field and and really seeing that but i'm telling you it's really everyday people i get inspired by and i pay attention and i take that always to my jobs joey what are your favorite magazines that you look to for inspiration um I, to piggyback, um, I also people watch a lot and I think that is just like a great tool for pop culture and just looking at constantly what people are wearing, how they're wearing it, why they're wearing it, you know, like the choices that they're making. Um, and I like that aspect too. And I apply that to high fashion kind of when I'm styling, like if I'm like, well, maybe I'll put a big earring here on a dress that's like, you know, very glamorous, you know, so like things like that interest me, but I look, I love, I used to love like Elle and Harper's Bazaar and then like the nylons, the edgier magazines. I love looking at um, European magazines and, and magazines from other countries just to, just to see what 
other people were doing or styling or what the their books look like because I just love like you know photography and just the art of fashion so I just turned to that and then I love like kind of net porte I like like that glamorous basic kind of um really glamorous fashion that's just interesting to me but now I find myself looking at Instagram a lot sometimes and looking at certain feeds that I'm inspired by <coughs> sorry <laughs> no it's good and Carson what are your <coughs> biggest source of inspiration yeah um definitely echoing what both of these women have said I think it, it never ceases to amaze me how you can really just see inspiration anywhere. Um, like this is going to sound so silly, but just this morning I was at my local farmer's market just up the way and saw like just a couple beautiful women. Just like, I love the way they put something together, something so simple, like the way they had these wraps around them. And I was inspired by that. I was like, okay, mental notes. Um, but absolutely everywhere for sure. Travel. I always thought it would be so interesting, Elizabeth, I've talked about this so many times. I think like, uh, and maybe they do now, but I think colleges should have like a class on, um, I don't know what you would call it, but almost like uh, an anthropology class on the study of fashion uh, through different geographies or like, cause even just throughout the US, it is so interesting. And I think there's probably so many factors that go into it. I mean, you can just, even if you've just lived in different cities throughout your life, you can see how there's such, different fashion cultures and style cultures um yes that's awesome and even and even like the seasons my gosh I mean even just locally as seasons change you can see you know different aspects of life um affecting affecting things and getting inspiration one thing that uh probably sounds really nerdy but like for color inspiration I actually uh love spending as much time in nature as I can. Like if I ever need a break, like if I ever feel like I'm run down, I'm like, okay, let me just go take a hike. Um, if I like, and just seeing how colors pair naturally in different landscapes and in nature, um, I think is a really beautiful way. And like kind of helps me be mindful whenever I am on a hike or visiting like different, um, uh, you know, different landscapes, like just taking stock and like how nature kind of put colors together and that sort of thing. That always, always inspires me too. But um, yeah, long answer long, literally everywhere. <laughs> well, I hate to have to wrap this up because I could just keep talking all day with you guys. But I want to thank you all for joining. And I want to let everyone else who wants to go to the next session, take a little five minute break. So thank you all for joining and taking time out of your day to share all of your wisdom. Yay. Thanks for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you guys so much. It was so it was great awesome. to chat with you. Yeah. Nice to meet everybody. You too. Thank you all.